Hello everyone and welcome back. This video is a result of me receiving hundreds of emails and comments about adding crankcase ventilation products to M8 engines. Those questions range from do I really need it to which one is best. I've also received messages from people raving about how great each one of these products we're going to review is with others complaining that they installed them and it didn't fix their sumping or oil mist problem in the intake. Some of them were upset about it. So today we're going to discuss these issues and compare the vented dipsticks from A1 Cycle and Fueling as well as the transmission top cover from Trask and A1 Cycles. Also, be sure later on in the video there to listen for a special discount code that was actually offered from one of these companies exclusive to our viewers. So let's get started. For complete transparency, I'd like to start by saying I didn't receive any compensation at all from any of these three companies for doing the video. I'll also tell you that Mike Beelan from A1 Cycle is a great friend of mine. Nick Trask is also a great friend. It, both of these guys and their companies are absolutely top notch. I've got mad respect for them both as peers and friends. Uh, Fueling is also a great company. And as with the other two, they put a tremendous effort into research and development. So now with that out of the way, let's move forward. Before we compare these products, we must first understand their purpose. They are designed to provide supplemental crankcase ventilation in engines that produce excessive crankcase pressure due to either excessive blow-by or to assist a stock crankcase ventilation system that may be inadequate for performance engine build with increased displacement, narrow piston rings, increased combustion pressures, and so on. So now let's talk about blow-by. All engines, doesn't matter, gas or diesel, stock or performance built ones, will have some amount of blow-by. If blow-by happens when the internal combustion that occurs in your engine's combustion chamber in the head and on top of the piston, and it forces contaminants such as air, fuel, moisture past the piston rings and into the crankcase. Uh, some is to be expected, but yes, certainly it can be excessive due to mechanical wear or failure. Uh, for example, if your engine's piston rings don't have a good fit, the cylinders aren't straight, or they're barreled, or tapered, or, or they're not well sealed. They cannot contain the pressure produced from the combustion, and they'll instead leak air and fuel and a mixture of that and contaminants, byproducts of combustion, into the crankcase. Now, over time, as the engine's pistons move up and down, we've got to remember it wears. So the pistons move up and down against the cylinders. Uh, both parts wear away. The cylinders become a little bit wider over time. The pistons become a little bit smaller. Uh, the piston rings also wear away, making them less capable of maintaining a firm seal. As all the parts continue to grind against each other over time, these issues can become more exaggerated, and the amount of blow-by can certainly increase. Uh, additionally, any of the soot and deposits left over from incomplete combustion will collect on the rings. That can interfere with their seal and can further worsen engine blow-by. Also, uh, remember, we're dealing with primarily air-cooled engines here. Uh, you can overheat them. Uh, you can tune them too rich or tune them too lean. Uh, it, it, all of those things can actually compromise ring seal as well, which will result in excessive blow-by. Uh, understand the concept of supplemental crankcase ventilation is not anything new at all. In an extreme case, we can look at, say, a whole ultra high performance drag racing engines in the car world. You know, these engines get big. Their compression ratios are absolutely through the roof. And then you take and you add things like, you know, blowers, superchargers, turbos, nitrous, and then you spin them up to mind blowing RPMs. In those cases, blow by will certainly occur. Now, in, in those types of engines, often massive external vacuum pumps, huge vacuum pumps, capable of maintaining over 20 inches are often required to evacuate that excessive crankcase pressure due to blow-by. And keep in mind, that's on engines that cost well into six figures in some cases. Uh, so simply put, piston rings are not 100% airtight. They can't be. As for your Harley, while not on the same scale, some blow-by will occur in both stock and performance-built engines. Uh, guys like Harman, we're, we're building 
120 cubic inch shovel heads back in the day. Uh, people have provided supplemental crankcase ventilation by installing fittings on their pushrod tubes and out of the top of their gear case covers. Even on my own personal big inch early twin cams, I vented rocker boxes, and so have many others in the performance world. Now, uh, before 2007, the dipsticks didn't thread into the transmission case. And, and it was absolutely possible under high RPMs with big, high compression engines with you know, massive cylinder pressure under high RPM conditions that it was possible for a dipstick to actually spit out of the, the transmission case, get blown across the street. And yes, that could happen on extremely healthy engines with no mechanical issues whatsoever. It comes down to the fact that the size of the engine and the combustion pressure produced by it exceeded the stock crankcase ventilation system's ability to evacuate the elevated pressure quickly enough. Of course, we're talking about performance built engines, modified engines and such in that case. So now, how does this apply to your M8? Uh, we must remember, the M8 variants are the largest factory engines the motor company's ever produced, making more power stock than they ever have. We're also aware of the sumping issues had with the earlier models involving cylinders, oil pumps, cam plates, leaking piston oilers, uh, crankshaft, uh, pinion shaft run out, as well as no seal versus having a seal on the oil pump. It, it, all of those things could lead to excessive carbon buildup on the piston as a result of severe sumping, actually causing sumping issues. So with you as a consumer and me as a builder, we can also produce far more power at even larger displacements and much higher compression ratios due to the efficiency of the four valve head in the M8. So much more in fact that it, we can easily exceed the stock crankcase ventilation system's ability to evacuate the extra blow by that can possibly occur in certain conditions. Uh, the, the factory crankcase breather system was designed basically for stock engines, not engines producing nearly twice the power as a stock one. And this is where all these products come in. Now, in no particular order, let's start with the ventilator dipstick from A1 Cycle. This kit comes with a vented dipstick. It's got a hose and a filter that, that comes out the other end of the hose. You simply replace your stock dipstick with this one. Now, one difference you'll notice between this and the other two items is there's, there's a lack of a one-way valve here. And uh, I'll show you that on the other two. I spoke to Mike directly about it and asked him for his reasoning. Uh, he said he didn't incorporate one, a, a one-way valve, because he feels like a free-breathing engine is more efficient. A small gulp of cool, fresh air during the upstroke helps to cool the engine. And most modern... Uh, notched or beveled piston rings. Uh, with those, a vacuum in the crankcase really isn't necessary. All right? So this is, without a doubt, a nicely machined piece. It's the lowest price one out of the three, and it'll do exactly what it says. It'll help reduce crankcase pressure. And one particular thing I want you to pay attention to is how large the hole is in this unit here. And there's no restriction. It actually passes straight through and would go straight to the, to the hole. So uh, that's a, a great added feature there. Now let's move to the fueling dipstick. Well, one of the things that makes this different is that inside the top cap here, there's an umbrella valve with a filter. Let me show it to you. Umbrella valve and the filter. And this serves to block incoming air during the upstroke of the piston. It also includes a hose with a quick release and a filter. Now, I didn't speak to anyone directly from fueling about this, but I, I can say it's pretty safe to assume that uh, they did their research and they feel that blocking incoming air is advantageous. So they incorporated that feature into their dipstick. It is a nicely machined piece. It's more expensive than the dipstick from A1, and it does exactly what they claim. Helps to reduce crankcase pressure. Now, as for the transmission top cover from Trask, they decided to take a little different approach, where they chose to vent the crankcase through the cavity that exists inside the transmission. They also incorporated this fast-acting, uh, 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 this is a real high-end reed valve here, the, relatively expensive assembly here, uh, to prevent incoming air coming in during the upstroke. It also includes a hose and a filter. 
Now this is priced about the same as, uh, as what the fueling dipstick is, but it does require a little bit more effort for installation. It's also a really nice part and does exactly what Trash says it does. It reduces crankcase pressure. Now I wanna add a fourth product to the mix from A1 Cycles. Mike also has a transmission top cover as well. And you'll notice this plug here, you can buy the filter kit and vent hose kit here that comes off of that. Uh, and this will vent the crankcase. If you need to swap a transmission quickly trackside, typically you would have to remove this top cover. So Mike came up with the idea of putting this plug in it here. And when you remove this plug, you can reach in there and lift up the shift ball. And when you do that, you can slide the transmission out without having to remove the top cover. Uh, and that's a pretty cool feature for those guys that think they might need it. Now I'll add this. Mike did offer exclusive to our YouTube viewers, which was pretty cool when I talked to him to ask him about this. Uh, if you'd like to order any of the ventilator products from A1 Cycles website, be sure to use the discount code Baxter's Garage at checkout for special discounts and free shipping. That's pretty cool, Mike. Thanks, pal. Now, all four of these products are great products. All provide supplemental crankcase ventilation. All have their own features and benefits, which is reflected in the cost of each. All are great products to consider. Some will prefer the ease of a installation of a dipstick. Others may find that they like the look of the trans top cover or may not want to touch a hot metal dipstick or deal with a hose when they want to check their oil. And as you can probably figure out, by this point, it would be virtually impossible to say that one of these does not work. They're relatively simple devices uh, designed to supplement your factory crankcase ventilation system in the event you have poor ring seal in your engine, excessive wear, etc., all the things I listed before, uh, or to assist when you have a performance engine and the factory breather system isn't quite enough. In some cases, they can also help and reduce excessive oil in your throttle body as well as reduce or eliminate something entirely if it's caused, in fact, by just crankcase pressure alone. It's not a matter of whether these products work because it's impossible for them not to. It comes down to the actual cause of your crankcase pressure or something problem and the severity of it. As you've seen in many of my videos, something can be caused by many things and it can have many levels of severity. If the issue is minor enough that a little help breathing can fix it, any of these products will do the job and also serve as a great preventive maintenance item as well. But what they cannot do is correct severe mechanical issues or failures of other parts not related to just a bit of excess crankcase pressure. Now, as a quick note, if you have excessive oil inside your throttle body, I get this question all the time. Yes, you can vent your breathers, your crankcase head breathers there. You can breathe that out to atmosphere and that avoids contaminating your throttle body. It helps to uh, eliminate carbon buildup. You're gonna have some carbon buildup on pistons, but it can greatly reduce it. It can also reduce the carbon and deposits on the rings and keep from reducing the life of your piston rings. But what I would recommend if you decide to do that is actually venting that to atmosphere, not, or into a catch can of some sort, not back inside the engine reason I say that, we have to remember what comes out of what, what is in the bottom of that crankcase, considering you have blow-by in all engines, is some waste byproduct from combustion, but it also contains condensation. And again, a little bit of fuel, all the things that happen in the combustion chamber. That's what's getting pushed past the rings. So if you run that up to the breather system, our goal is to remove those contaminants from the engine entirely if possible. We can do that if we vent it to atmosphere or a catch can. But if we recirculate that back into the engine somehow, we're just returning those contaminants back into the oil. Along, again, we have to remember, especially down here in the south, where we have very humid environments here. I've run catch cans on bike, put a thousand miles on it, drain the catch can, and you just get this brown, you know, light brown goo out of it. Most of it's water mixed in with a little bit of oil. So I want to keep that out of there, vent it to atmosphere or vent it to a catch can. So let's sum this up. If one of these products does not reduce or eliminate your oil misting or something issue, then most likely you have some sort of mechanical problem or other part failure 
severe enough that supplemental crank ventilation can't simply fix it and that problem should probably be addressed. All of these are a great first step to solving sumping and misting issues and also serve to possibly avoid future issues in stock as well as performance built engines. Would I recommend any of these three? I absolutely would. Which I would recommend is based on your budget. As a consumer, your feelings towards their features and of course their benefits. Installing them may just help you breathe a sigh of relief. Be sure to check out our other videos on sumping issues along with many engine teardown videos where I analyze the different causes of sumping in both twin cams and M8s. We get into great detail and there are a couple of dozen videos on that topic specifically. Also, if you've not already and you think I've earned it, please hit that subscribe button and then the notification bell to receive updates next time we post a video. We've got some fantastic engine building footage coming, some customer delivery videos step-by-step -step on a twin cam build. We've got some M8 videos, and we also, with Jim's, more tool tech videos coming on parts that I used and reviewed for the curve bike there. Uh, their top-end oil conversion system, their uh, five-speed transmission, their oil pump, and we're also going to be starting our complete crank-up build series on Evo, shovel and pan head here very soon. So again, hit that button, that bell. So when I load a video, you'll get a notification. And guys, I appreciate you watching. Thanks a million to all of our members, all of our viewers, the comments. I wish I had time to answer them. Uh, thanks guys for sticking in there with us, uh, for supporting the channel and spreading the word about, uh, about what we're doing here. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Have a good one.